Good evening and welcome to the monthly program of the Gay Liberation Network. I'm Bob Schwartz and sitting next to me is the co-founder of the Gay Liberation Network, Andy Thayer. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about the meetings scheduled in Chicago for next May of the G8 in NATO. Uh, many of our viewers probably don't know too much about the group of eight nations uh, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. And so we should probably say just a little bit about um, uh, uh, what these institutions are before getting into a description of, uh, of uh, uh, what uh, we and hopefully thousands of other people are going to do about these, uh, these meetings here. The uh, G8, the group of eight nations, uh, includes the United States, Germany, France, Canada, Spain, Italy, the UK, and Russia. Uh, they account for approximately 53% of the uh, uh, gross domestic product of, of the world. Um, they meet, the, the, the uh, eight nations meet yearly to develop and coordinate policies that uh, we contend benefit the economic elites of the various countries uh, um, involved. And they are meeting in what uh, is arguably the worst worldwide recession or depression uh, since the 1930s. They'll be meeting here in Chicago. At the same time, I believe since the, uh, the first time since 1977, uh, the uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, the, the military alliance that was originally set up uh, uh, as an anti-Soviet Union um, uh, a formation following World War II, is meeting in Chicago also simultane uh, simultaneously. Simultaneously, yeah. Simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And uh, th th this is perhaps uh, uh, no accident, uh, since uh, if you're going to try to rule the world, uh, you need a military force to back it up. And um, so ha having said those things, um, I'd like to, uh, uh, to, to ask Andy to expound a bit on, on what, what, the, what the, the G8 and NATO are really all about. I mean, our mm -hmm. government would have us believe that, that, uh, that the G8 or these democracies you know, fighting to, to, to make life better for everybody the uh, NATO was recently involved in uh, the the invasion, uh, uh, well, the the bombing and uh, uh, virtual invasion of Libya, fighting for democracy. We're told, uh, what's really going on here, Andy? Well, I mean, as I think, what you're going to have next May here in Chicago is, to paraphrase Martin Luther King, uh, the greatest aggregation of the biggest purveyors of world of violence in the world today that you have the biggest military powers. I mean, the United States by itself spends as much as on its military as almost the rest of the world combined. The United States since 9-11, um, and mind you, the Afghanistan invasion is ostensibly a NATO invasion. Um, since 9-11, the United States has nearly doubled its military spending. You add in some of the countries that you talked about, and, and by the way, China is often invited to these uh, G8 uh, gatherings as well. Uh, you're basically talking about some of the biggest human rights abusers in the world gathering in one place, in this case in Chicago, and for good reason, these meetings in the past have been uh, subject to very large protests because people are angry about what the United States and NATO is doing in the world. The vast majority of people in Afghanistan, for example, are opposed to the occupy, occupation of their country. Same with Iraq, same with uh, the drone bombings that you're seeing in Yemen and Somalia and Pakistan. The vast ma the majority of the peoples of the, those countries are opposed to that. Uh, and yet the tiny elites of those uh, governments, combined with a admittedly tiny elite that run the United States, um, are pushing forward with these wars, even though the vast majority of people in the United States now, according to, to polls, are opposed to these wars. So you're having an anti-democratic uh, assemblage of military leaders. And then when you're talking about the G8, which is the economic uh, 
economic alliance, you're also talking about the same people who've pushed uh, trade deals that, that unfairly punish uh, so-called third world countries, such as you know, things like the North American uh, Free Trade Agreement, which has devastated the rural economy of Central America. Uh, th these are bodies of people, whether on the business side or whether on the military side, that the vast majority of their populations oppose. Um, it, for the most part. Several months ago, uh, I saw a television coverage of massive protests in Athens, Greece. Mm -hmm. And the reporter, uh, who I, I thought reporters were supposed to stick to the facts, but th this reporter kept, kept saying, well, the, 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 these Greek workers uh, have, have had all these benefits. Mm -hmm. and, and the Greek government can no longer afford this. And, and, and so there, there are going to have to be cutbacks. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it seems to me that austerity uh, 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 is, is the name of the game, not, not only in Greece, but, but, but uh, uh, in other European uh, 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 nations, and here in the U.S. too. Well, it's people a, have to do with less, we're told. Yes, well, it's very interesting to bring up the, the example of Greece, because people can remember it wasn't too many months ago that the city of Chicago, there was a big debate about whether or not we should get the 2016 Olympics. Well, Greece, unlike Chicago, unfortunately for them, got the Olympics not too many years ago, and it basically helped bankrupt the country. And now uh, those those Olympic projects are big white elephants in downtown Athens, and uh, Greek workers are paying for it, and they're they're saying no. Um, and you now you have. Uh, basically, uh, Mayor Emanuel's version of the 2016 Olympics coming here, the G8 and NATO confabs, uh, a way that he can, like daily before him, attempted to make a big name for himself, coming to Chicago, and you'll have at least hundreds of, of thousands of dollars, certainly millions, I would expect, maybe even tens of millions of dollars spent on so-called security for these uh, for these meetings, and no one is saying, well, is that going to come out of the hide of Chicagoans? And even if Mayor Emanuel says, no, the city of Chicago is not going to pay one dime for that, the experience has been not only, well, the federal government will be paying for it, and we're part of paying federal taxes here in Chicago, but also the millions of dollars in lawsuits that have come traditionally after each of these big confabs because the police over and over again, whether you're talking Pittsburgh, whether you're talking Toronto, whether you're talking uh, Seattle, whatever, they have been shown over and over again the police forces of a variety of different cities have uh, massively violated people's rights. And when those activists who had their rights violated went into court, over and over again, juries of their peers have found that the cities were liable for these massive uh, rights violations. And in these cities, and soon coming to Chicago here, will be paying out millions of dollars. So when we need tax money for schools, for public transportation, for housing, for summer jobs programs for kids so we don't have people shooting in themselves in the streets and so forth. Instead, we're going to be paying for robocop Chicago policemen, um, all sorts of law enforcement coming in from around, as well as, of course, massive civil liberties violations. This happens over and over and over again. Um, one thing, though, before we start our... Um, our, uh, continue our conversation here, Bob. I think we should uh, give our viewers a few quick announcements about uh, some things that are coming up. One of these things is coming tomorrow. Um, if you want to find out more about the Gay Liberation Network, please do check out our website, www.gayliberation.net. And we've got, as I just mentioned, an event coming up tomorrow, 9-11 uh, the Afghanistan War, 10 years later. There's lots of retrospects, uh, retrospectives going about the 9-11 uh, right now, uh, but what no one is talking about is the near doubling of American uh, 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 expenditures on the military since 9-11. And according to the CIA, there's all of maybe 50 al-Qaeda in the entire country of Afghanistan, and yet President Obama is committed to continuing this occupation. So come to the event at the Merlot Public Library tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. about that. That's over on 644 West Belmont. 
And also coming up on Saturday, October 8th, is going to be the 10th anniversary of the Afghanistan invasion. And there's going to be a march on the uh, Obama 2012 campaign headquarters about that. So our viewers should uh, check that out. 12 noon, Saturday, October 8th, uh, meeting at the intersection of Michigan Avenue and Congress Parkway. Um, so. Well, what are you, Bob? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's important uh, that, that we keep a focus on the austerity drive that uh, the, uh, the leaders of the G8 nations, uh, so, sometimes using the NATO military, uh, uh, are, uh, uh, are enforcing uh, uh, on a global scale. And right here in the United States, uh, in fact, right across the border in Wisconsin, uh, we've seen uh, the austerity drive there you know, kick into high gear with the attempt to uh, uh, take away union rights from uh, uh, most state workers and, and their response to it. And uh, uh, the, the, the response that occurred there to the austerity drive is what I hope we'll see here in Chicago mm -hmm. to the, uh, the, the meeting of the G8 and, uh, and NATO. Well, and Bob, you bring up an important point because um, people, our viewers may be watching, tuning in here to the LGBT consortium. Why, why is a gay group talking about the G8 and NATO? How could anything be farther afield from what a group such as ours might be inclined to talk about? And I think it's important to point out that when you spend all this money on the military, if you give a damn about the kind of funding that, say, the Howard Brown Health Center gets, if you give a damn about the kind of funding that the Center on Halstead or the Knight Ministries or any other social service agency that benefits the LGBT community, and yet at the same time you don't talk about the military, you don't talk about the wasteful spending on this G8 NATO meeting coming up, then, then frankly, I don't have any time for you. Because um, the fact is the military is, is reaching into all of our pockets and taking money out that could be going to needed social services. You, you look at the violence problem in this city and in the country generally. There's a reason why most other uh, industrialized countries don't have anything near the, the kind of violence program because they've got jobs programs. They've got decent, uh, at least a decent floor for people so people don't feel so insecure. But here we're, we're spending it on basically trying to rule most of the rest of the world. Well, and, and, and talking about cutting back on the safety net that is there. Such How as, pathetic it is already, such, yes. Such as it is, they're, they're, they're talking about cutbacks. There are very, very few people in Congress, uh, including Obama, are, 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 are talking about cutbacks in military spending. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. sacrosanct. Oh, right. that, that, no, we, we've got to keep that up. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're talking about cutting back Social Security, mm -hmm. Medicare, Medicaid, and other other programs that uh, that people need to sustain themselves. Well, at, at the same time that that most major American corporations are actually sitting on record piles of cash, and this yeah. is one thing that most people don't know right now, um, that a lot of these corporations that they're talking about giving incentive tax cuts, whether Obama or the Republicans, to, um, they're sitting on record amounts of cash, basically because they don't see. A, a productive means to invest it in that will actually get them a decent rate of return. Uh, and so to give them more tax cuts as the way that both parties are talking about is basically saying shovel more cash at them when they already have got plenty of cash but they've decided that they can't get a decent rate of return on it so they're going to sit on it or put it into speculation or whatever. Well that yeah, that's the thing there, 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 there's very little production going on in the United States mm -hmm. today they, they've shipped, shipped the production overseas uh, in pursuit of cheap labor and what, what you have here uh, is money being made on speculation mm -hmm. and that that's what 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 uh, what got us into the uh, the immediate uh, crisis in the first place mm -hmm. was uh, uh, mindless speculation on, on the part of the Wall Street banks, and they're, they're still doing it, and they, they've been rewarded for doing it with, with massive bailouts. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the CEOs have given themselves these, uh, these huge bonuses, and the politicians don't do anything about it.
Yeah. Well, they 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 do a lot. They they encourage it because well, they know where they're getting their campaign contributions. Yeah. Yeah, you know. they, they do encourage it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. in that sense, they do something about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and I think, and it's a bipartisan uh, policy. I mean, you see the president uh, on track to receive a record amount of campaign contributions before the 2012 uh, uh, campaign. And, uh, you know, the Republicans are complaining about it, but they're as much part of the problem as the Democrats are. Uh, it, it's hypocrisy, basically, on both sides of the aisle uh, is what we're seeing here. Um, and what we have in the form of the G8 NATO is a concentration, frankly, of some of the biggest human rights abusers and, and, and thieves in, in the world. And, and along that note, I, I think our LGBT members of our audience should really pay particular attention to this point. Uh, it was just a few weeks ago that President Obama signed a proclamation saying that he would not allow any LGBT human rights abusers into the United States. And of course, this was released with a great deal of fanfare in the gay press and, oh, you know, President Obama, he's doing a great, great thing for us. Well, I just asked President Obama, if you're going to live up to that pledge, are you going to keep out Vladimir Putin and uh, Dmitry Medvedev, the, the leaders of Russia, which is a documented human rights abuser of LGBTs? Um, are you going to keep out the leaders of China? Again, documented leaders of, of, of uh, uh, human rights abuses against LGBTs in that country. Are you going to keep out these internationally recognized, including by the U.S. State Department, these human rights abusers of LGBTs for the G8 NATO meeting. I think, obviously, I've answered my own question that the present words are just that. They're hot air. Um, and uh, that's something that, uh, that, that shows you. I mean, one of the things that I was just doing a little bit of reading up before today's show, uh, Salon.com, uh, had an article about uh, extraordinary rendition and how that led to torture in places like Egypt and Libya. You remember just a few days ago, uh, the president has and uh, Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton were talking about the horrible human rights abuses of the Gaddafi regime, which is true. It was a horrible human rights abuser. But of course, the United States <laughs> government was complicit in this, according to the Salon.com article about how they were basically uh, subcontracting uh, torture to the Gaddafi regime. Um, and, and you've had a, a, a situation in Afghan Afghanistan where they've recognized that, that widespread systematic torture has happened under the client uh, regime in that country as well. Um, well, and, and uh, on the subject of torture, uh, Dick Cheney uh, has admitted that, uh, that, that uh, uh, he encouraged mm -hmm. uh, waterboarding and other, other so-called enhanced mm -hmm. uh, interrogation. Waterboarding, uh, uh, which has uh, been methods. recognized since the Spanish Inquisition as yeah, torture. Yeah, this is not something new. It's widely recognized as torture, and, uh, and Cheney has, uh, you know, has admitted to it. Uh, and others in the in the in the Bush regime have, uh, uh, you know, encouraged it, uh, uh, including attorneys, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, working for the Justice Department and advising the White House. Uh, the, the the and this, these people should have been uh, uh, hauled uh, before a, a court international courts yes. as, as war criminals. But uh, uh, Obama. Uh, uh, to, to took, took that off the table. Well, mm -hmm. there, there will be no prosecutions. We need to look to the future, he said, and not to the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's concerned about his own record uh, yeah. be, being looked at by uh, you mm -hmm. know, a, a future uh, administration. Well, there was a, a former uh, CIA official that was um, quoted in this uh, Salon.com article who said that basically there has been uh, very little difference between the current administration and the Bush administration when it comes to um, respect for human rights, uh, torture, and so forth. The one thing they did say is that there's less extraordinary rendition going on, and instead they're simply assassinating people. So, okay, there is a little bit of difference in that <laughs> respect, uh, but not any that uh, people on the ground might notice. But, I mean, the, the ironic thing about this thing, Bob, is, is that it, here we are on nearly on the anniversary, 10th anniversary of 9-11, and there's all this talk about terrorism, the fight against terrorism, and so forth. And it's precisely these policies of U.S. attempting to dominate 
other peoples of the world, that is the biggest that that's the biggest recruiting pitch for terrorism. Um, that, you know what leads people to commit these heinous acts, and you have to say it's it's anger at the heinous acts of the United States government. Again, Martin Luther King back in the day described the United States government as the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. And, and unfortunately, that record really hasn't changed that much in the intervening years. Well, some, some, some writers have pointed out that, uh, uh, you know, it, it's certainly true that there haven't been uh, any, any, uh, any additional uh, attacks on the United States, uh, mm -hmm. such as occurred on 9-11. Uh, on um, but uh, they, they've also pointed out that, that uh, uh, bin Laden uh, uh, had, had written that you know, we don't need mm -hmm. to attack the United States anymore. The mm -hmm. United States is, is, is going to be, you know... It's the biggest recruiting. I mean, what, we, what causes... Doing our recruiting for us. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what you've seen. You've all these so-called Al-Qaeda um, affiliates that have cropped up. Um, they, you know, probably most of them didn't have any direct um, conversations with Osama bin Laden. They became so angered at, at the United States' support of dictators in their countries. I mean, that's what the WikiLeaks revelations showed us, is that all these dictators um, that were supported by the United States, um, that's, what, that's why people resent the United States. Yeah. I mean, how would we feel it if someone imposed a tin pot dictator on us here in the city of Chicago? Okay, I won't answer that question, but we are <laughs> at the uh, at the point where we do need to, to close out our show with a, a few announcements here. So uh, um, again, uh, we've got uh, the program coming up tomorrow, 9/11 uh, and the Afghanistan War. That's the Merlot Public Library, 2:30 p.m., 644 West Belmont Avenue, and then coming up on October 8th, a protest on the 10th anniversary of the Afghanistan invasion starting at 12 noon at the intersection of Michigan and Congress. And we've got uh, also uh, our next meeting coming up Wednesday, September 14th. Everyone here is invited to that. And then our next show is going to be Friday, October 14th, same time and same channel. And then just to close out uh, with a few uh, credits here. <laughs>